way through season, no preseason. So what are your goals, short, long-term? And how can we expect Tata Martino's team to play, similar to Atlanta United or different? Bueno, la pregunta es tácticamente, primero el equipo en 2017-2018 jugaban 3-5-2, mucha presión. Eh, tácticamente, ¿cómo podemos esperar el equipo de Tata Martino que, que juegue? Y eh, opinión de tomar el equipo a mitad de temporada y cuáles son sus metas a corto y largo plazo. Empezamos por el final. Eh, la experiencia de tomar un equipo en mitad de temporada es, este, en mi vida como entrenador se ha dado pocas veces. Eh, probablemente eh, necesitemos ese tiempo que hablemos, hablamos antes para este, terminar de tener al, al equipo completo eh, y la forma de juego sí aspiramos a que sea algo parecido a Atlanta pero está claro que acomodándonos a los futbolistas que finalmente tengamos en el, en el roster Yes, taking over a team mid-season It's something that has only happened to me a few times in my life. But as I said before, we'll, we'll need time to be able to have the full team. And in terms of the style of play, I, I aspire that this team plays similarly to Atlanta, but adapted to the players that we will have here. Ian Hess, then Chris Whittingham. Thanks, Rafa. Hola, Tata. Hola. Hola. Ian Hess with uh, the Van Heeren Outlet. Welcome. Uh, my question to you is, is on the academy side of things. A lot of the big names have come in, but Inter Miami over the past couple of years have relied very much on homegrown players. You did similar things in Atlanta with your time there. W what's the plan for the development path from the academy to the first team with all of these big stars, brand new names coming in to, to continue that progress? Thank you. Yeah. La pregunta es sobre la academia. Sí. Eh, Inter Miami ha sido un equipo que ha contado mucho con jugadores procedentes de la academia. Sí. Eh, ¿Cuál es el plan? para darle oportunidades a esos chicos que vienen de la academia, considerando que también vienen grandes figuras a, a la escuadra. Darle posibilidades a los chicos de la academia eh, es algo que nosotros lleg llevamos en nuestra naturaleza porque venimos de un club, o nacimos en un club que justamente tiene este, esos valores, ¿no? Eh, y ese tipo de trabajo, eh, inclinarse hacia la academia. Eh, nuestra intención es incluso entrenar muy cerca del segundo equipo, de, de los chicos este, más jóvenes, eh, utilizarlos en el día a día, ir viendo su evolución. Así que cuando alguno de ellos merezca tener una oportunidad, independientemente de los futbolistas que tengamos, seguramente la va a tener. Yeah, our, our plan is to give them opportunities to the, to the youth in the academy. Uh, naturally, we're, you know, we were born in, in a club that, that has these values um, as a team, which is giving opportunities to academy players. And our intention is to train near the second team, the academy players, and give them opportunities when, when they deserve it. Chris Whittingham. Chris Whittingham, MLS season pass. My question is for Chris. Um, from the day that Phil left to now, what was the process about filling this void and I, I guess my question would be how obvious of a fit is Tata given his previous both managing big players at big clubs and also having success in MLS yeah Chris we we uh we, we had targets uh and Tata was the target we wanted and uh you know we're, we're so happy to be able to to get it over the line um you know in working with uh, David Beckham Jorge and Jose Moss working together with leadership at the club uh we're able to bring in a, a a winner, someone who's won, uh, someone with experience uh, can come in and be able to uh, take a group, um, uh, you know, climb the table. Uh, the goal is to make the playoffs this year. Uh, we're in the semifinals of U.S. Open Cup uh, and Leagues Cup. Um, so there's a lot to play for for this club and a lot to build. Um, but, you know, we got we got the target that we wanted to sign. First of all, I, I see a league that is... Uh permanently worried about evolving and growing. And um, this also, this league has so many rules and, the, and there and it's so many of them that there's no room for people to complain because they're very clear. Also, this league is very competitive and level and it gives everyone a chance based on the drafts and, and the uh, budgets and, and that gives everyone a fair chance to win it. And lastly, the complexity of the weather, the travel, 
gives you gives coaches a lot more to think about and to deal with beyond just what you have to manage on the field. Michelle? Hi, Chris. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, timing things, just how long do you think the paperwork is going to take for Tata and his staff to be able to start coaching? And uh, how much do you think the roster is the roster as we see it going to change a lot? A little, you know, what what is going to happen over the next few weeks? What team are we going to see in the next few weeks? Thank you. Um, you know, everything's been submitted, uh, so we are we are working on uh, you know the visa process um, that will run its run its process, and hopefully, you know, the next five six days we can we can move forward and he can start working. So we're excited for that. Um, you know, meetings now, observing. Um, but, um, you know, with, with the season and the roster, I, I think it's about getting some players back healthy, which is going to be really important. We've been unfortunate with some, some big injuries this year, but, uh, the good part is those players are getting healthy and, and not, not that far, uh, from coming back to, to helping our team, uh, international duty. It'll be great to get these players, uh, back from gold cup, uh, and be able to contribute. And looking at the young players we've we've been able to play, a great opportunity for them. They're going to grow through this experience. Um, you know, tough stretch as a team, but great opportunity for their growth. Uh, so putting all that together and adding the new additions in the summer, um, you know, come come late August, we're going to have a, a different look, a different team. This will give the opportunity for Tata and his staff to work with the players in a new way. Um, so the combination of that, it feels like a new beginning for the club. Uh, and we're going to do everything we can to rise up the table game by game. The two, we know the two that are, that have already said they're coming. How many more should we expect? Yeah, I mean, the window opens July 5th. So we're working on uh, everything we can to try and improve the squad and make us competitive in every position. So we want to have competition in every position. Um, so we're going to work on on trying to do that. And whether it's in league or out of league, we want to improve the team. We're going to do the last three questions, Andrea, then here, then Fernando. Don Gerardo, bienvenido. Sí. Andrea Llanes, nice. Deporte Total. Yo, o sea, yo le quería preguntar, ¿qué lo motivó a cambiar el fútbol de selecciones por un equipo? Eh, lo vimos en los años pasados con México. Va, bueno, a pesar de todo lo que pasó, bastante cómodo ahí. Y segundo, rapidito, si le podía preguntar, le han preguntado por Messi, por Busquets, por Joseph. Yo le quería preguntar por Pizarro, eh, que es un jugador al que usted le dio un chance de volver a la selección mexicana cuando no estaba en un muy bu buen momento, acá se habla mucho que se puede ir. Quería conocer su opinión acerca de eso. Gracias. Bueno, en realidad es, estoy volviendo a un club, eh, pero es lo que hago habitualmente. Me la paso de un club a una selección y viceversa. Y, y como disfruto de las dos cosas, este, siempre eh, atiendo las posibilidades de trabajo que tengan que ver con cualquiera de esas dos posibilidades. De Rodo, sí, nosotros incluso... Rodo tiene que ver, mucho que ver con los dos primeros años de México que fueron totalmente distintos a los dos segundos años de México. Eh, y nosotros sabemos de la situación de él. Eh, yo, esta es la parte futbolística. Después hay una cuestión que tiene que ver estrictamente con, con la dirigencia y, y, y ver cuál será su futuro. En este caso no, no será algo que termine resolviéndose por una cuestión futbolística. Last question here, then Fernando. Okay. Buenos días, Tata. Buenos días, Chris. Marion Zapata de Moon Sports. Eh, tengo una pregunta que no sé si pueda ser contestada todavía, pero sí. creo que todos nos morimos de ganas por saberlo. Y es, ¿cuál ¿Cuándo? es esa fecha exacta o por lo menos tentativa de ese primer juego que va a estar maravillosamente dirigido por ti? Donde van a estar las estrellas del Inter de Miami y, por supuesto, el debut del campeón mundial actual, Leo Messi. Le contesto yo. The, the, <laughs> yeah, question on, on when we should expect uh, to have Messi debut. Yeah. Um, with regard to Leo, it's, you know, terms are agreed, but we're, we're um, uh, working on the paperwork uh, with Major League Soccer. So, um, you know, those are, are going to take time to finish, but, um, you know, we, we hope uh, you know that there's a there's a time in in mid mid late July that he's that he's ready to go, but um, that that's just going to be up to how he finishes uh, all the, all the paperwork. Last question, Fernando. 
Hola, Fernando Fiore. ¿Qué tal, Gerardo? Hola. Te recuerdo tu nombre por si no te acordaba. Para que te, te acordaba. Acorda. Qué bueno saber que, que fue al revés, ¿no? Que Messi y Busquets y a lo mejor otro vienen porque estás vos. No como, como, no, como no, decía, en eh, parte. En no, parte. En, en realidad tampoco creo que sea así. Simplemente mencionar que, que, fue al eh, revés. que, que siempre hablamos este, con, con la gente de, de Inter y y que este, ellos tomaron las decisiones porque, porque la analizaron, siempre los futbolistas analizan desde su lugar, desde la posibilidad de trabajo, desde su familia, este, no digo que una cosa tenga que ver con otra, digo que, que yo hablaba un poco antes, nada más. Mi pregunta es acerca de algo que, que, que es muy importante para los que estamos desde el primer día, ¿no? porque sabemos que es una gran familia, ¿cuál va a ser tu equipo de trabajo? Eh... Bien, mi equipo de trabajo serán los profesores Rodolfo Paladini y Manuel Alfaro, eh, el, el videoanalista que es Damián Silvero y mis asistentes que son Jorge Taylor y Gerardo Martino. Sí. Sí, me acuerdo el nombre de él. Eh, no, no, no. Así que ese es el grupo de trabajo. Perfecto. All right, and that concludes today's press conference. Thank you. Thank bueno, you. gracias. gracias.